this so what I propose here is the skull was afterwards put on a pole as a trophy. And they weren't just single trophies. Carefully punching holes in the sides of the skull, the Mesoamericans would run a pole through and string many skulls together. In one find, a skull rack consisted of 170 skulls. The purpose seems clear to frighten and subjugate all those who might oppose them. For the Mesoamericans, human sacrifice brought order to the world. It preserved the theocratic system. It sated the gods with blood. And it kept the elite in power to dominate the masses and crush dissent. But just before the beginning of the Chaco era, a time of great civil anarchy rocked this world. It is known that many fled the Valley of Mexico. The crux of Turner's theory, and his most controversial proposition yet, is that a small cult came north, traveling up to Chaco Canyon, carrying their bloody beliefs with them. He believes that when this fierce group encountered the ancestral Pueblans, they found a peaceful, pliant people who were easy to subjugate. According to Turner, the Mesoamerican cult set out to recreate the same system they had left behind, a culture of intimidation and social control. They needed some kind of weapon, and, and certainly cannibalism would serve as a weapon. You don't have to kill a lot of people to make your point, and they used cannibalism as a threat. It's a terrifying thing. We're afraid of it ourselves. I mean, the, the revulsion we have is in part because we can imagine ourselves being consumed. And I can imagine word getting out that we've got cannibals in our midst uh, would bring about a lot of social control with, with, with very, very little effort. So Turner suggests that the inhabitants of the Chaco region may not have been the cannibals, but their victims. I think the terrorism idea, one form or another, in my mind, is the strongest hypothesis we have. Uh, if it's um, people treating other people as though they're animals and, and butchering them in the same way that you would an animal and, and even consuming the, the, the result, that, um, you know, that, that probably is intended to send a political message. Uh, Warning. It's a warning against other people not to do something that these people are accused of having done. It seems to scientists like Wilcox and Turner that for at least two and a half centuries, some group practiced cannibalism to secure control over a vast area of the American Southwest. But somewhere around 1150 AD, things began to change. Environmental conditions took a turn for the worse, the climate became cold and dry. Crops began to fail. Game became scarce. It was a time of drought, starvation, and disease. And the Chaco rain came to an end. At the same time, signs of cannibalism in the skeletal record wane, indicating the decline of Chaco corresponds to the end of cannibalism. It took Christy Turner most of his professional career to gather his evidence for cannibalism, prove his case, and gain support for his theory. But controversy surrounding him has not abated. Turner's latest theory, the Mesoamerican Connection, has provoked heated debate, sparked new research, and kept alive the mystery of cannibalism in the canyon. With online experiments and new forensic evidence, find more answers to history's greatest mysteries at pbs.org.
Secrets of the Dead was made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. This is PBS.